Hey, Fix It Tony here. Today I'm going to be replacing a couple of outlets near my computer desk area uh, here in the kitchen with a, a commercial slash hospital grade uh, receptacle that contains both a uh, old style USB and a new style USB-C uh, charging port. These are also high output for fast charging. Uh, there's also a built-in childproof protection uh, plastic little cover that's in behind there. That's part of new code. Um, I have outlets that work. Here, let me show you. This is where it's going to go. Right here. So I'm I have these uh, oil rub bronze cover plates with these new modern day push button switches. And I'm going to be putting sort of more color coded receptacles. So it also serves uh, the purpose of just muting the difference in color between a uh, receptacle and a cover plate um, and I think it'll look better but also being a computer station we have iPads iPhones I have my light cameras my Luma cubes so I really want to charge them instead of putting them on my kitchen counter I want to have them here uh, by the desk uh, first thing I'm going to do is I need to locate the circuit that this outlet is on uh, I did power down my computer so I do know that my computer is off, and uh, this is a sort of a this is a circuit finder. So once I turn this on, it sort of gets into a stable state, and you're going to hear a um, an audible pulse. That's going to be the pulse I'm going to be look, listening for down at my uh, panel panel box. So just to il illustrate what is the pulse tone that I should be paying attention for. Almost, it almost sounds like a cricket. And you can see the signal is very high, maximum. So, just being two inches away, I get a very minimal tone. So if I hear this tone, it's not gonna be close. So as I go closer to the actual breaker, I'm hoping for a louder tone and a louder signal indicator. I'll show you when I get down there. So I'm in my mechanical room near my breaker panel box and my circuit tester. So basically I gotta be on the on side. So I'm putting my probe on the power side. Dining room foyer lights is across from the basement GFI. This is the, the range for the stove, the master bedroom. Bathroom, kitchen lights, dryers, master bedroom, dishwasher, disposable, mechanical room. So we have a basement bathroom GFI as an option or basement bathroom as a whole. So let's try the basement bathroom GFI breaker. Well, this light is still on. <laughs> And so is that light. So I must have guessed the incorrect breaker. So let's go try and flip the other one. Back up and down and huh, you must have noticed the light turn off. There's no light here. So my computer must be down. But I will get my uh, handy dandy this is a Fluke GFCI and uh, receptacle tester. And no power. No power in there. Just to make sure. Yeah, good. We're all set. So the beginning process is not much different than any other process of replacing a light switch or a receptacle. Sometimes the cover plate will 
stick to the wall. And when that happens, you have to get a knife and separate it. Because if you don't, it will peel the paint off and just peel the wall and you don't want that. What I'll do is I'll take this blade and I'll just sort of scrape this off and clean this stuff off before I put it back. All right, so now what I gotta do is pull out all these connections because I have to assess how much room I have in this box because these big monster receptacles have to go inside. So I'm sort of taking a peek in here and I'm seeing my connections are way in there. That's good, they're in the back, they're tucked in. And these pigtails are quite long. I don't need them this long. I'm, gonna tr I'm actually gonna trim these back um, to make it easier to tuck the wires in because of the larger box that I have to go in there. I'm actually gonna do this a couple of ways. The first way, is just unscrewing the terminals. Oh, let me point out, see when the electricians put this receptacle in, they left this terminal out. What they should have done was screw it in. So any unused terminals should be screwed in. Undo the ground. Then you get a pair of pliers. Bend it around. Grab the wire. And just twist it around. That's that. This is still good. Um, it'll be a spare. So if one of the other rooms in the house uh, needs a new outlet, I'll, I'll save it. Now another approach is since I have to cut these, so that's one way. Another way to be sort of, so I'm gonna go like this. Yeah, I'll just cut an inch off. So I'm gonna cut, I can just get a pair of side cutters and I can cut, cut, and cut. These wires have a little bit of a curve, so we're just going to make them straight. A little bit longer. Okay, that's that one. I have to get the, the w copper wire in behind this terminal here. So there's this screw, Let's see, there's a screw, then there's this sort of brass plate. I have to get the screw uh, underneath that little brass plate, and I'm just gonna do a 45 degree turn on the wire so that it goes past the screw and a little bit uh, pointing you know, to the right as I tighten it down, it will be uh, secured. So this is my Wea Torx screwdriver. And it comes with the Torx section in here. This is an insert that has a multiple changing bits. So I have a Phillips. It's currently set to 14. Um, I'm going to set it to 12. So you have this special screwdriver that you shove in the hole. And let me see here. 
So in the window, let's see here. You can see it's set to 12 inch pounds. So then I then put this, let's zoom that back up. There, and now it's ready to go. So let's just see what my torque on my screwdriver is compared to a number. So I torqued to at least 12, so we're good. Now I bring this carefully. I'm bending this up behind the back. And then I have my black wire on this side. I'll, I'll make the black wire connection last. So you'll see, oh, let me see here if I can zoom in for you there. So take my wire, fish it in. This is gonna be the tricky part. You gotta get the wire there. And then you get a screwdriver. That's about where I would do it. So now let's see what the torque screwdriver says. That's 12. Yeah, so when you hear that click, that's when you know you're torqued. So that's good. Call that within spec. And then I'll work on the other side. Hold on a second. Back one, I could flip this over to give you a sort of a chance at seeing this. Uh, I am gonna have to grab this wire and turn it. I'm gonna flip this orientation like that. Get it underneath and around. And you can see how that's gonna go in. Oh, let me stop and say, so I got these Wea screwdrivers today, and uh, I decided to try another set of screwdrivers. And I must say, I love how these feel in my hand. I've got, you, you, you may have seen in multiple other videos, I had these Stanley screwdriver set. I think they're really good too. Um, those are probably 15 to 17 years old, but they're doing great. Oh, I didn't, oh, you can see here, look what I did, I wasn't paying attention. The wire didn't go underneath the brass plate. It's underneath the screw and it's only partially grabbed. So that's not good. Oops-a-daisy. difference there okay so that's about where I feel comfortable in terms of tightening it yeah there you go torque screwdriver that's it all right, so now I gotta flip this back this way. Okay. Let's take this back out. So I'm gonna bend the white to the back of the receptacle and take the black and bend it across the back. And then I'm gonna bend it down. And then the white is bent down. And 
then see this little S curve? That's a pre-bend, so that's gonna bend. And then this is gonna bend up. And then we just slot that right in there. Okay. And then, the old-fashioned route of screwing this in by hand or we can go cordless Tune it. So I'm going to keep it loose. This bottom one is too tight. The reason why I'm going to keep this on the loose side uh, there. on the loose side is when I put this cover plate back on, I need to fine tune the locations fine-tune the locations of these cover plate mounting screws. So sometimes you have to go left, right, and then you tighten it in, and then hopefully everything will fit and line up. A little bit of tinkering with the cover plates. It should be standard universal, but you never know. So that one is okay. So now I have the cover plate on. You can see the contrast, you know, it's so much nicer being all dark. Now this is just not 100%. I need to get this just over just a hair. Well, probably too much, let's see. Just wanna make sure that the gaps, gaps around the cover plate and the receptacle are, are pretty good. There we go, I think that's pretty good. Holes here, 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 and here are lining up. It's just a matter of replacing these cover plate screws and we should be ready to test. One final tip is when you're putting the cover plate cover screws back on, uh, it's a sign of a professional or someone who takes care is if they orient all the slots vertically. You do that and then we're gonna be all set. All right, now I'm gonna turn on the power, see if the breaker trips, and uh, we'll test each of these ports. All right, to make sure we have good connections. Two green lights mean good. Two green lights mean good. Two green lights mean good. And we're good. <laughs> 